Fantasy gamers were pulling strings in the middle rounds of the fantasy drafts, trying to draft the right Bengals running back. Zach Moss or Chase Brown? Which one did you roll with? Which one did you want in your fantasy league? Because we're still trying to figure that out. The depth chart rolled out with Zach Moss as the starter. Did that cause FOMO for anybody? Did that cause you wanting to get Zach Moss even more? Or did that make you more skeptical and made you want Chase Brown even more? We're going to look at the news, the facts, the data, the advanced analytics to see whether or not you need Chase Brown or Zach Moss on your fantasy team. We're going to do that. We're going to deep dive these guys right now to see if you want them rostered. But before we do, you need to click that subscribe button right now. We deep dive these scenarios, these players, so you can get the news, the information, the stats to make your sound decisions on what you want to do or the confirmation bias that you need. Click that button. Stop missing out. We'll be talking about the top waiver wire players like this on top of helping you set your lineups with these videos. Again, smash that subscribe button because I'm going to be here for you. But the depth chart's out for week one to start the season. Zach Moss, then Chase Brown. That's what it's going with. But can we hold that to truth? We're going to listen to Zach Taylor right now. We're going to see what he's about. Zach Moss as the number one chart is that an indication that he'll get more reps than chase brown or are you still planning for it to be almost 50 50 split yeah you can ask pj and emily my favorite thing in the world is talk about the depth chart <laughs> um which i pay no attention to whatsoever and we've got a lot of players that are all starters it can depend on what personnel grouping we have on the field the first play of the game so to me that's a it's meaningless i know we have to do it i i put no no time into it because i think we got a lot of players that are capable of being starting players for us and um, same as guys that run out the tunnel. Sometimes that's that's a lot of unnecessary angst on my part. You know, it's we got many guys that could be fit in that role, and sometimes as a head coach, you just got to point to one and yeah, test them. What we saw there was typical coach speak. Does not care about the depth chart per se, but we'll know when we get on the field. We'll know when they start bringing these guys in and out. These are two different types of running backs. And there was also an indication there that there could be still a committee. And there's more than likely a committee once you start looking at these running backs because they are vastly different. You got your thunder lightning scenario and which one will win out when it comes to touches and money situations, balls caught and everything else. That is what we're looking at. Zach Moss, the veteran, 26 years old. Chase Brown, an older, younger player is what you want to call that. He's in year two, but 24 years old because he racked up a career at Illinois. 4-4, 40-yard dash coming out. 4-6-5, 40-yard dash on Zach Moss, but with some mileage on it. So it could be at that speed, but slower. But again, vastly different players. We got size with Zach Moss. We got a banger between the tackles. Chase Brown's got speed, electricity. We saw that last year on the back end of the season. But Zach Moss was picked up due to his dependability, his ability to grind between the tackles. When you call the play, you know what's going to happen with him. With Chase Brown, you know what's going to happen too. You know we're going to have an opportunity to score on anywhere on the field. But with Zach Moss, he can be productive. That doesn't mean he will, but he can be productive. He proven that last year with the Colts for RB1 weeks. He was a big pickup. He was getting volume. He was getting opportunities. But the thing about this, he was good at getting volume, but he wasn't really good at being efficient. Didn't really stand out really on any of those numbers. You can also call it offensive line, the system, and everything else. But Zach Moss gave you what Zach Moss gave you throughout his career. A guy that can handle a workload. A guy that can bang it between the tackles around the goal line. A guy that can be efficient when the play's called an efficiency, meaning the play's ran correctly. But he's not going to be like one of the top running backs in the league when he's back there. He might be juiced up a bit with his numbers in this offense. But we'll be talking about this offense more going forward. Pass blocking, he's okay. He's dependable. He's all right when it comes to grading. This is from PFF. So if you don't like PFF, just throw this out. Just throw this out. On top of that, do look at this with a grain of salt. He's okay in pass protection. He's also a veteran, tried and true. And the injury history is not really that bad. Nothing super structural here. So nothing really to worry about. Even though he's an older running back, he is bigger too. He can handle some of the mileage there. He's a guy that's going to get touches and workload. We're looking at Chase Brown. Very effective running back out of college. 1,600 yards his final year there. He had that big game against Michigan. Had some big performances. 223 yards against Penn State. 
180 against Minnesota, 199 against Indiana. Some of those fluff teams from the Big Ten against Iowa, 146. Michigan, 140. Anybody he went up against, he went off. Nebraska, 110. Northwestern, 112. Wisconsin, 129. He did the best he could in his situation, and then he blew up. Week 14 against the Colts. Chase Brown saw it from the sidelines. 19.5 PBR fantasy points, 8.1 the next week. A big waiver wire option during that time. Everybody wanted him. He's got speed to burn. He's a lottery ticket. He's a lottery ticket that showed you his upside. He gave you a little taste. He gave you a little taste. But look at Chase Brown. 4.1 yards per carry last year. Really led the team, unless you count Jake Browning. That was a joke, though. That's a joke. Trayvon Williams, 5.1. But less carries. Half of that. Chase Brown, though. Do that long run. Do some of those exciting plays we saw. Was able to be efficient. And you look at this team in a neutral game script. The Bengals are a little bit slower paced. That makes sense. But you got to throw that out. Due to Burrow being out during the back end of the season. So that changed things up. With Burrow being healthy, you might see it being a little bit quicker. This team does not have to be fast paced because they can push it downfield on any given play. Chase, T. Higgins, they got other wide receivers with speed downfield. They can pick up those yards in a hurry. They don't have to play small ball. That being said, too, you cannot put guys in the box against this team or Jamar Chase is going to eat you up. It's going to be easier for these running backs to eat. So who do you rather have, Chase Brown or Zach Moss? When I really think about it, short term, I want Zach Moss. Upside wise, I want Chase Brown, and I'm split on that. Rightfully so, I feel like Zach Moss is the safer play. Like, if you want to draft or pick up players with two condoms on, you're going with Zach Moss. Probably going to start off the season getting the touches of the workload. The first series is going to be out there. Chase Brown's got so much upside. He's kind of got that Keaton Mitchell in him, but a little bit slower because Keaton Mitchell, 4.38 speed. He can go off on any given play. He can score 20 fantasy points on any game just due to like two or three plays where he went off at. That is what you're looking at, Chase Brown. Something happens to Zach Moss or something happens to Chase Brown. You're going to want that running back because the Bengals offense can be potent. It can get in these matchups that are just straight slugfest and they got to use the running back. They got two good running backs here that are very underrated. They fell in drafts at good prices because you don't know which one's going to be a guy. And maybe the coaching staff does not know which one's going to be the guy. That's the thing. The coaching staff may not know. They may just have Zach Moss listed as a starter. They're going to roll him out and start of the game. They're going to see what happens. They feel like they're going to use him on a lot of carries. But if Brown goes off on a carry or two, they're going to keep him in. They're going to roll with the hot hand like he said. And he's not lying about that. That's what coaches do. But again, in this scenario here, it's not like you got a Joe Mixon or Derrick Henry in front of Brown or in front of Moss. These are two guys with some talent, but also not world beaters either that could really get the job on any given Sunday and still lose it in the same Sunday as well. So you're looking at these guys as lottery tickets in a situation that could allow these players to go boom. I like Chase Brown because I like to gamble. I like to shoot for upside. If I'm a player and I play fantasy and I like to play with multiple condoms on, I'm going with Zach Moss. And I will pick him up from time to time. I'm not against Zach Moss. I'm not against either running back. But I'm a guy that likes to gamble. And if I'm going to gamble, I'm going to gamble on the upside, especially in the middle rounds. And he's gone. Our drafts are done. You probably have either running back. You're probably looking at what to do here. I like the upside. And the upside fails out. Guess what? I'm chasing upside again on the waiver wire. I'm going to live to fight another day. Zach Moss, tried, true, dependable. That's what the coaching staff likes. And I'm not against him. I like him for the short term. First few weeks of the season, I think Chase Brown's going to get some opportunities to flash as well. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching. Catch you on the next video.